first off, can you each tell me how you each become involved in the project? Um, just like with any job really, the script came my way and I was an unemployed actor. Um, loved the script. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> Yeah, just the kind of the same as any other job really, but it was quite an intense auditioning process. So, yeah, it was quite a long time. I don't know about you guys, but it took about sort of three or four months till I was confirmed for it. So yeah, it's quite grueling. Yeah, well, um, got Emily Talelli, the casting director, that apparently thought of me like, after seeing the, seeing the script, and they got me in. Not not written, unfortunately, but then but then luckily for me anyway, they thought about me and then um, then came in and. It, Actually, the directors, Chris and Ben Blaine, are uh, really good audition, really interesting audition. It felt like you're actually already sort of working on it. And so after, after reading the script and then meeting them, that's what it took. <laughs> it's convinced. Same, yeah. Just uh, got, got sent the script. Um, I was kind of horrified when I first read it. And um, I, did, I actually didn't want to be involved initially. Uh, yeah. Um, because I was just afraid, um, and then uh, I, they, I was, yeah, I came around to the idea and committed to it, and ended up having a really cool time. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think it is about the horror genre that appeals to so many people? Because they're quite flexible in the way that they think, and a lot more open-minded. And I think, as a horror fan myself, I want. To feel scared or I want to feel something and there's something so intense and intimate about watching a horror film by yourself on your laptop and it's dark in your bedroom and it's such an effect on me personally yeah, yeah I mean I'd, all of that I mean everyone wants, likes to be scared occasionally in a safe way but <laughs> we've been really lucky I think in the way because I didn't, I didn't necessarily see Nina being as like a, just an out and out horror film it's not quite like that so Sort of spun a few genres and things like that, but like the whole horror community and stuff has embraced it, and it shows that it's a lot of open-minded people. And they see yeah. sort of like you know, this, they're glad to have something that has horror elements, but also has other things. So it isn't just a straightforward story, and isn't just a you know, I've seen you know, there's lots of things going on, and it's not just straightforward and an easy watch necessarily. And people have been really open to that. It's great. Yeah, they've. Um they surprised me, the horror audience, by like, how tender they are, um, and like the guy said, just just how open. Like I don't have really any experience with horror. I don't I don't know it. I don't really understand it. I don't even understand what the word genre means. Like seriously, I don't I don't get it. So um, this never read as a horror. It frightened me, but it frightened me as an actor um, to put myself in that position. Um, and the position that Nina is in was just really weird for my imagination. That was really quite scary. Um, so on that level, it was kind of horrific initially when I first read it. But um, I didn't really know that it was a horror movie. I just, I just, yeah, I just thought it was like some crazy, some crazy film. But exactly, exactly. Um, so there's so much to it, but that it's been. Um, that it's being so warmly embraced by the horror crowd or whatever is is really cool because uh, it just it shows that they're very very tender and I like that. First off, welcome to Fright Fest. Thank you very much. Um, can you give me a quick synopsis of what the audiences can expect at home, please? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Nina Forever is a film about uh, a girl called Holly who's training to be a paramedic and she falls in love with a kind of guy called Rob who's kind of moody and grieving and she feels like she can help him and all her friends kind of warn her off him but she's like no I can fix this guy because you know I feel like I kind of got an insight into his problems but the first time they sleep together his dead girlfriend who he's been grieving for kind of magically and impossibly and awfully materializes in bed between them kind of still talking but still very much kind of mangled and bloody from the car crash in which she died 18 months earlier and the rest of the film follows the three of them trying to make this relationship work. <laughs> well, that says a lot. Um, right, uh, as I understand, it's your, for both of you, it's your direct table, uh, direct table debut. Uh, can you tell me what that process was like? Uh, it's been amazing, actually. It's, it's, it's great to finally get to be doing something on a full scale and to finally be 
really realizing everything that we've always wanted to do with film. You know, it feels like the perfect first film for us. Um, so yeah, really pleased with the whole th whole process. Yeah, really pleased, and particularly with the the relationships that we've been able to build with kind of the team who helped us make the film. You know, it's like uh, it's it's really inspiring to kind of come up with weird bizarre ideas that you know kind of make the pair of us go wow I like that but then to find people who kind of pull out the gems of that and turn it into something beautiful before your eyes it's it's a real privilege it's a real privilege uh, Cassandra as, as producer uh, what's it been like working with these two guys that have like helmed this creative imagination um, it's been incredible. They are, as you say, very imaginative and um, actually also very warm, which I don't know whether that always it's comes just to... The lights. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but actually um, we've, we've built a fantastic team for the film, but part of that team were people who had collaborated with the Blaines before and they build um, a family around themselves because they are warm and they're giving and they are very collaborative and enjoy that creative process of going back and forth with the people around them. So it's been just a real joy to be honest. Lovely. Uh, what, what do you think it is about the, uh, the horror genre that appeals to so many persons? It's actually, the funny thing for us actually is that we, we were writing a film, we weren't even thinking what genre it was going to be in. And it's been really, really amazing to see that the horror audiences are really taking their heart, you know, really getting attracted to it and really understanding it. And I think actually the big thing about horror is that you're saying they're going, it's the one place really with films that you get to explore your deepest, darkest thoughts. Um, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, deep emotions, you know, you, you go on this incredible ride of either fear or joy or wh whatever it is, it's usually a mix of them and, and I think that is just so primal and it sort of speaks to all of us, you know, and you can explore this darkness that you wouldn't want to necessarily explore in real life, you know, so yeah, I think so it's special. Our, our own exactly, hours. how wonderful is that? <laughs> and, uh, and lastly, uh, you know, the fact that your first film is being shown at Fright Fest, I mean, what does that mean to you guys? It's a great honour. It's a great honour and a great privilege. I mean, you know, it's a very uh, small, low budget independent film, and we made it kind of slightly deliberately, kind of outside of any kind of industry. We just sort of, you know, the three of us went off and made the film. But we very much were making it to express something in us and to, to finally scratch that itch and make a film. And I think any kind of reception to it was not, we never thought that far ahead, really, did we? No, we didn't. We didn't. But actually, the more the the closer we got to finishing the film, the more we knew that Fright Fest was the perfect place to be seeing it uh, for the first time in the UK. So we're really, really happy to be here. Yeah. And, yeah. And your thoughts on Fright Fest? You come to Fright Fest? Oh, fantastic! It's such a crazy and wonderful audience. They're so illiterate. They love what they, you know, what they see here, and um, yeah, and the guys who run it are just fantastic. So you know, we're, we feel extremely privileged to be part of that family and kind of want to come back. So you know, got to go on and make another one.